104.5, the team, your home for all New York sports and, and for a long time. This guy right here, Albany Athletics, Joe Cremo, sitting with us right now. Joe, I, I, take us through the decision because that's where I've been getting the most questions. Like people, because you know, you're friendly with the show, because we do you all, many people think that like you called us. You didn't, just, for, just to be clear, didn't ask my opinion. I'm not hurt. It's okay. <laughs> but Joe, how did, how, did this all, how did this all come to pass, you deciding to, to move on to a, a bigger school? Yeah, uh, so obviously it's been tough. Obviously, the uh, going over three in the at Albany, which it and, and it sucks. It hurts me a lot, you know, to have to leave and to make the decision. In the end, it was more than that. It was just about me trying to find a level that you know I could play at the highest level. And anybody that knows me from you know my high school teammates to close friends to family know that I always wanted to play at the highest level and have a chance to play there, um, and just prove that I you know I could play against the best. So. Um, I tried to give it my all at Albany. I felt like I left it all out there on the floor. Um, you know, every day, you know, working out, bringing guys in the gym. I feel like I went about my business the right way. Didn't, you know, stayed out of trouble, all that stuff. And that's kind of just how I've been my whole life. So, uh, it's nothing personal. And at the end of the day, I explained that to the coaches and it was tough. Obviously I've been around here my whole life around the community and just trying to, uh, figure out, you know, for once in my life, kind of what's best for me and, you know, try and look out for myself. That last part there, for once in your life, looking out for you, I think one of the things that's kind of caught me off guard from somebody not being from the area, then moving to the area, is your initial recruiting process of yeah. why you selected Albany from Scotia. Kind of take us through that of how you ended up deciding to play for the Great Danes. Yeah, um, so I was a you know junior when uh, I took my unofficial there, and then actually um, when my grandma passed away, they offered me on the day of her funeral and I was like, hey, this, you know, might be, you know, kind of her calling kind of thing. And uh, I, but I said to the coaches, like, if I had to do it all again, I wouldn't take any of it back because I've been through so much up and down. And maybe I came so custom to winning at, you know, Scotia that, you know, going through a little tough drought and 0-3 where there's a lot of responsibility on my shoulders and, you know, where a lot of people look at it as, hey, you could come back and have another chance to win another champion or win a championship and go off with a great legacy. For me, it was, like I said, um, that whole recruiting process, like I said, I wouldn't change any of it. Um, I've been through a lot, up and down, good and bad. And just that, that process, I only took one unofficial. I never took an official visit in my life. Uh, you know, never played AAU because I stuck with my guys in high school, kind of like, uh, and that's what it was. It stayed around the area and never really was exposed to anything. So now this is a little different for me, and uh, it's been a little crazy. Joe Cremo with us right now, 104.5 of the team. So, uh, how is Will Brown reacting? How's the coach handling all this? Yeah, um, you know, obviously he's a coach, so and, and he's been my coach for three years, and we've built a pretty good relationship with each other. So, um, you know, he's disappointed, obviously. Um, you know, he knows how much I meant to the team, and, 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 and I like I said to him before, it wasn't anything personal, nothing he did. Um, but, yeah, he, but at the end of the day, he told me, listen, like, whatever your decision is, I respect you as a person, be, you know, at, before the player kind of thing. And, um, you know, he respect my decision. He said he'd support me either way, and, and he has. You know, he, he said he'll reach out to schools if he has to, um, if I need him to, and um, just like that. I mean, he's always been there for me, and, you know, he said he always will be, and vice versa. Like, I told them if they ever need me, I'm only a, a call or text away. And like I said, it's nothing personal. Like, it's just right. me trying to take a chance on myself. Are you a little jealous of Nichols right now? I mean, Dave Nichols is making the same move, but because he didn't grow up in Scotia, because he wasn't, you know, the capital, <laughs> we're all like sitting there going, oh, that sucks, Dave. Hey, Joe, where are you going? <laughs> like, are you a little, like, do you and Dave uh, talk about that at all? Yeah, no, like, I mean, obviously me being around the area, he's always, you know, uh, me and him have had so much, you know, good times together, so much, you know, bad times together too. But um, he's got a great opportunity at hand too. So he's going to find a, uh, a good fit for him. And, you know, we keep each other in the loop and, um, you know, we've been through a lot up and down, like I said, but at the end of the day, uh, we care about each other still. So we're still trying to keep each other in the loop, try and find out where the best fit for each of us is. And, uh, I don't think we're going to be going to the same school to play together again. Uh, let's just, we're just having a reality check here. I told them, <laughs> I told them, let's be honest, we're probably not going to find a school that wants both of us. So, you know, keep each other in the loop and, you know, I wish the best for him. Like he's my guy. So as you touched on there, you're communication with David is still ongoing before you both had made the decision to move on to another school was there talk amongst each other that hey maybe we'll do this together or this is our right move because 
it's like a new job, a new school. You kind of have somebody to lean on for doing something you've never done before. What was that talk like with him? No, I actually, um, the day before I told, uh, actually the day of that I told the coaches, I wanted to tell him um, before I told anybody else on our team just kind of what, what I was going through because he's been there with me for three years. And, uh, you know, uh, once he, you know, kind of found that out and he talked to the coaches and, and I don't know all the details with his conversation with the coaches, but obviously – he figured the best situation for him was, you know, he was going to transfer. And um, whatever that conversation was, you know, that's what they kind of both felt, I guess. And, you know, Coach said, you know, he told me that Coach said he'd support him too and, and his decision and as much as it's tough on the coach and uh, and, the, and the staff um, and and the community. Um, we just thought it was what, what was best for us in the end. And, you know, like I said, sometime in this world you got to you know, look out for yourself a little bit. And this is like the first time you've done that. So, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I respect it because I, I can see – I see the, the wheels turning. I see like the – you know, if, if I'm you and it's been three years of not making the tournament and you're watching the tournament, that has to play a factor in this too. You're sitting home, Joe, and you're, you know, you're watching these schools and, and some of them are on the phone. Yeah. And, and you're watching them play. That had to, that had to kind of light a little fire in you as well. Yeah, that's uh, – and like I said, anybody that knows me and, and myself, you know, I know myself better than anyone. That's always been my goal, and, and that was my goal at Albany, you know. You know, win a championship, take a team to the tournament, and try and take it to a, a new kind of level. And, again, people are going to say, hey, you could do that next year. And um, But I really feel like I can compete with anyone, so that's really what it came down to. And after talking with, like, my family, and they just want what's best for me and just talking to my family and some of my, you know, people that I'm really close with, we just thought – you know, it'd, it'd be okay to do this and kind of go ahead with it. And what you don't want to look back and be like, what if, you know? So I'm not kind of a what if guy. I kind of want to go out there and take the chance I got and go with it. Joe Cremo right now on 104.5 The Team. I'm shocked that Gaz isn't wearing Syracuse orange. No, I'm not. I should have done my I recruiting pitch recruiting today. recruiting right now. Instead of wearing the Syracuse orange, going to act like a, like a cheesy game show host and act like you're on The Bachelor right now and say, <laughs> as you're looking at schools, what are some of the things that you're hoping to see in a school that might interest you in Excited with that program. Yeah. Um, so obviously, uh, fit is huge for me. Uh, a chance where I'll be able to have a big role and play. Playing time's big for me. Nothing's guaranteed. A lot of schools can promise you this and that. Nothing's guaranteed. Say the truth. Warm weather, hot weather. Warm weather. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get myself in trouble on here. <laughs> Joe, see how smart he already is? Come yeah, on. That's right. <laughs> Warm weather. Um, yeah, that's that sounds pretty good to me, but I've grown up in the cold, so I, I'm used to it, and uh, th- that doesn't really affect me, honestly. But, uh, yeah, so fit is big for me, like I was saying, you know, chance to play, have a chance to compete in the tournament, and then uh, hopefully um, chance to set me up for the next level. I think the thing I've been trying to figure out, I've talked to LeVac about this, and this was something I wanted to ask you, is that as you make this move towards a new program, a new school, I'm curious to see what you view as a successful move. Is it, you know, winning, getting to the NCAA tournament, getting to, I know there's a lot of levels to that, but, you know, we look a year from now, what would you deem as, like, the dream scenario, the most successful thing that could happen for you? Yeah, uh, you know, I've kind of been looking at it a couple different ways, so two different ways. So one was just I haven't consistently been enjoying playing basketball for the last couple of years, um, and a lot of it does have to do with winning. Like I said, I was accustomed to that in high school, and, you know, when you do, you know, come up short that much, you know, we still went 22 and 10, but at the end of the day, you're a one bid league. So being a champ, not getting a championship, it's, it's hurt a lot. And, you know, my freshman year, it, it stung. I thought we had a good chance. I'm like, I can come back and, you know, we could be really good. Last year, we lose a close one in the championship. And then this year we get upset and I'm like, wow, like I'm over three. So it, it's a big reality check for me. And, um, like I said, for me, I guess, yeah, like going to the tournament would be a huge uh, <laughs> weight off my shoulders. That's always been a dream of mine. And I think that's anybody, you know, growing up that wants to play college basketball. You want to play in the tournament. You want to have a chance at, um, you know, making a run in the tournament. So that would be huge for me. Um, but then at the end of the day, just me being happy and being able to compete and just enjoy it, that's uh, a big part of it too. Because, you know, if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, it's hard for me to, to keep going. But Obviously, you guys know how motivated I am and stuff and, <laughs> you know, all the coach talk that I have, but it's honestly what I mean. So, Joe Cremo with this 104.5 team. So, Joe, I, I know there's been a lot of schools that have already reached out. A lot of a lot of them, I mean, and I know you have to be very careful how you word things just because, you know, you never know who's going to show interest or, or, or pull back interest based on how you word things. So, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to, like, 
this isn't by no means saying that you don't you know love a Creighton or a whoever, but is there any schools that have reached out that you're like, holy cow, they they're watching? Yeah. So you know when you're looking when you're growing up, you see you know some coaches that are you know like those coaches that everybody talks about. Um, and I guess you know I had a phone call with uh, Arizona and Sean Miller, and that was like wow, like and, and and I'll just name a couple like Mick Cronin from Cincinnati and Shaka Smart from Texas. Um, and then, like you said, like Creighton, like with Doug McDermott's dad on the phone with me, uh, it's just like, wow, like it's a reality, ch- like it's like a reality check. And then it's like, kind of like I told some of my guys, like my friends from home, I'm like, man, I'm kind of messed up in the head right now. I feel like, <laughs> but I said in a good way, like, I feel like I'm on like cloud nine kind of thing where it's like, do I really understand what's going on right now? And I'm like, I come from Scotia, you know, 3000 people. And now I'm talking to like all the, like these big time coaches and it's like humbling for me. You know, I guess if I had people telling me how good I was my whole life and, you know, had people in my ear saying, you're so great, you're so good. And maybe I'd be, you know, a little more cocky. And so you're saying you don't answer the phone whenever Zach Bai calls. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Zach, Zach Bai has been calling me like nonstop. So, but, uh, is there a Denver school reaching out? Cause he might be looking for, <laughs> he might need a roommate or something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. But like, I guess like going back to those schools, like I said, it, it's humbling for me and, uh, just, just trying to take it, take it all in and then just trying to figure out, you know, not a school that's just like the big name kind of thing, just a school that, you know, I got to find out where I'm going to fit in best. But yeah, there's been some schools that I'm like, wow. And uh, I said, some of them I have to explain to them, like Scotia, New York. They're like Nova Scotia. I'm like, (laughs) no, like, you know, I've heard, I've heard that one a thousand times. I'm like, no, it's like this little town. Like it's a, you know, it's actually called a village and it's uh, 20 minutes from Albany. They're like, Oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, I know. All I get of a sudden, it. they start speaking slower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Nobody knows where it is. And and uh, like I said to them, I've told them all that. I, you know, I never played AAU this and that. And some of them are like, listen, like we value guys that sometimes aren't top 100 players. I go, listen, I might not be a top 300 player like ranked <laughs> in this country. Um, but yeah, so it's been a process. I'm enjoying it though, for sure. As a graduate transfer, what are the rules next for you? Can you take four or five official visits? What's kind of the timeline for you the next month to two months? Yeah, um, I can take five official visits. Um, coaches could, you know, can come see me, um, and and that would be, you know, for me that's great because I can really tell, like, I can start to tell, you know, who really cares, um, who really has like true interest. You know, if they come out and see me, um, that's nice. And a lot of them have have offered that. Um, before, you know, before we make an official visit and that just gives me a little more reassurance like that they, you know, they might really care and just having that face to face contact with them. Um, uh, that would be cool. So, uh, I don't really know my timetable, like when I want to, you know, start mapping out, you know, official visits and stuff and, uh, but, you know, start to narrow things down, make it a little easier on myself and, you know, instead of having a list of like 25, 30 schools and try and get it down like, you know, like 15, 20, like 15, you know, 12, somewhere in there and just kind of move from there. But I'm kind of in that process. haven't really done it yet. So Joe Cremo, you're, you're so, you're so much more adult than me. <laughs> if I had like, if I had this many, like I would turn into a total game show. I'd be like, guys, uh, first cut's coming up in 24 hours. <laughs> Find Scotia. If you can find me, you maybe can woo me. Where uh, you're just like being very mature and taking and taking. I mean, it is your yeah. life, supposedly, whatever. But yeah. But I, I would totally, oh my god, I would turn this into a total like Miss America game show kind of thing. Like this, this would be the batch. I'd be handing out roses. Yeah. Well, well, growing up too with like you know certain guys on my team, and I'll give Scotty Stapera a little shout out. You know, he was like a little brother to me, and you know, I guess I kind of had to be that like older brother kind of figure. And whether that meant me throwing him on the ground or like, you know, punching him here and there, whatever. <laughs> he was like, he was a little pest. So he was just all over, like trying to like scrape claw, like, you know, this and that. And then I'd throw him off like the floor, like throw him to the ground. And his dad would be like, all right, Joe, go sit down. You know? <laughs> and, I'd, and I'd be MFing him and saying like, hey, you're just doing this because he's your son. And, you know, you just let him do whatever he wants. And, and I'd be swearing and he'd be like, all right, you done? You done? And, and then finally I'd chill out and he'd be like, all right, come on get back in. So like. Maybe it was me. Uh, maybe I'm not, I'm not joking around as much, I guess, just because I always had to be like that kind of <laughs> older brother kind of right, thing. And I really had no no time for those guys to goof around, and I was always just trying to get us to the next level. And I know I guess it worked out in high school and uh, just trying to find a spot where I'm, you know, valued and wanted kind of like I, you know, just like I guess I have been. So 
Well, Levesque, he can still bring you on the official visits if you need like the oh, perfect balance, advisor? right? You know, oh, like yeah. the, the comedy on one side, yep, the basketball yep. on the other. <laughs> no, because you know what, man, he's smart. Like Joe, you're sp- like in all seriousness, I would leave with a duffel bag. I would, <laughs> I would. <laughs> oh, I would. Joe, would be like, Joe, would be like all of a sudden, like, bro, you can't spell Wichita State. Why do you want me to go here so bad? I, <laughs> look, just try it. It's a feeling. No, um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, it's it's awesome. I'm glad that you're getting this opportunity to. You know, to be wooed. I mean, to have these guys reach out in all these schools. And, and at this point, you have everyone still up. Like You haven't ruled anyone out yet. Uh, a few here and there. Okay, but they already know that. Yeah, they already know that. So so if you're listening to this for a, for a code, and you're some, some school somewhere, and you're as, if, if you haven't heard, you're still in. Yeah. You're, in the, you're in the cremo sweepstakes. Yeah. You yeah. haven't got your rose yet. I've been trying to tell them, like, I'm open to a lot, and, and, and I know – but I also know at the end of the day, time is valuable for a lot of these coaches, and, and it is for me too. And I don't want to waste their time. They don't want to waste my time. So you got to be straight up and honest with you know some people, and that's how it goes. Like I said, I'm new to all this recruiting, so you know I kind of just figured that out a, you know about a week ago. and uh, Or no, actually, no, it hasn't been a week, so a few days just kind of talking to some people. Probably feels I'm, a lot longer than it yeah, has been. Yeah, it's been a lot, and just figuring out the last couple of days that, hey, you got to be honest with some people, and they'll respect it, and it's not – you know, that's how it goes. They probably had a hundred of those phone calls in their life where it's like, all right, you know, best of luck with everything. So I want to be recruited so bad right now. <laughs> so bad. All right, Joe. Well, no matter what you need from us, you let us know. Best of luck. We're, uh, we're thrilled for you. We're glad you're taking this opportunity to chase your dreams all the way. And uh, whatever support you, you need in the uh, cap region, we even know how to get to Scotia. We're, we're, uh, oh, we're, yeah. we're here for you, brother. Just uh, best <laughs> of luck and, and just enjoy it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.